Let's talk a little bit about basic usage modification and renaming within the Infinite Retouch panel. If you're new to Infinite Retouch, please check out infinite-tools and there you can see Infinite Retouch along with other videos on how to use it and uh, all the other aspects of the panel itself. Now, one thing that I do want to mention here really quick, let me go and delete my layers here, um, is the modification aspect of uh, Infinite Retouch where you're able to actually modify a lot and make it completely customizable to your own workflow. The first thing that I want to talk about today at this current moment is going to be the bottom here, which you, which you have your helper layers. Now, we obviously have a video dedicated to helper layers individually, which goes into full depth of every one of these in case you're curious. However, I want to talk about the right click option for helper layers. So I'm going to quickly just enable them. And then when I right click here on any of these, you're going to get a couple of different options. Number one is add mode and replace mode, as well as the edit section here. So the first thing that before we get into the edit section, let's talk about um, add or replace mode. So simply put by default, my behavior is set to add, which means simply put, if I enable one of these options, L means luminosity, so I've enabled luminosity mode, and then maybe I want to enter contrast. So I've enabled both of them. So you can see they are both active and you can see this because when I open up my help layers, you'll see luminosity and contrast. So if I uncheck luminosity, it turns it off. So that's add mode. You can add a few of them at the same time. However, when I right click again on any of the icons, click on replace and go back, what it does is when I click on them one at a time, it only shows up one at a time. And this is great. Um, but sometimes let's just say that you have it set to replace like I have, and you want it to add, like maybe you at this current moment, you want to add this. You don't want to go into your settings every time, click on the different behavior and then come back out. What you can do instead hit alt or option, and then click on the individual areas here. So now you can see it's adding them. Or if I just click on one without alter option, it simply just clicks on one by one. Now, the next thing we're going to go into talk about is uh, into the edit area here. This edit area is really helpful because it goes over, you know, pretty much any layer name that you want, color that you want, um, etc. So you can decide what layers are going to be there. Again, we're going to have videos separately on helper layers. But now let's go into the functionality of the other parts of the uh, interface. So let's just say I go into my retouch area. Let me delete my helper layers for a second. Now, normally when you want to use these buttons, you simply click on them and then suddenly you get the layers that correlate to the action or whatever it is that it does on your layer stack. So let's say theoretically you want to modify this. You want to make it your own. Well, simply put, you can right click on it and you get a couple of options. Number one, you can decide whatever the button does. So even though it says healing, you can do whatever you want. So let's just say I keep a blank layer, which it normally is set to a normal blend mode. I can then decide whether I want to run an action after it is enabled, which we'll go over later. There's going to be a separate video specifically on auto run action and auto select tool. So please check those out. Um, and that will give you an idea of how these, these functions work. But for now, let's just say I go into edit and I can change the button name. I can maybe call it like clone instead of normal. And so what happens is if I come back out, click on this, the button itself is called clone and the layers themselves have not changed in any other way. If I want to change that, when I go back to that edit section, I could decide the name of the group that it generates. I can call it clone instead and I can call the layer, whatever I want as well. And I can also change the colors by clicking on these two buttons here and deciding if I would like a different color. So I'll have my clone layer set to red, I have my group set to purple for no other reason, just just, just to demonstrate. Um, and then when I go back, I can change the blend mode. But just really quickly, I can also decide that once this button is clicked, it should select the exact button that I'm looking for, or the exact tool that I'm looking for. So over here, it's going to say, what primary tool are you looking to select? And I'll say 
clone stamp tool because with the clone layer you would like to use a clone stamp tool so i'm going to click on it hit apply and it has that there and again it has no area to save so it once you select or change something it automatically saves which makes it much much faster now i click on back when i click on this button what's going to happen is it's going to create a group with a blank layer inside and it's going to select the clone brush right after that so let's go and try that out and click on it and there we go here let me bring this out for you can see it easier we have clone we have clone layer and then also it automatically selected the clone brush so you can see here that this allows me to easily with one click customize this button to make it whatever i want you can make it select whatever tool that you would like it's really really great again as i mentioned if you would like to see more on auto run action or auto select tool and all the functionalities please check out their respective videos but when it comes to the ability to go ahead and use these buttons that's kind of how to do that um, and again the reason i also want you to check out these videos separately is because there's some other functionality like when you hit um, alt or option you can set two different tools so as we mentioned when you click on it it automatically selects a clone stamp tool but if you have it where you hit alt or option and click on the healing brush and say apply and now i hit alt or option on my keyboard and then click on it it does the same thing except now it goes to my healing brush so maybe you know you would like one to be your clone brush and then when you hit alt or option and click on the button it adds it adds another layer, but the primary tool becomes the healing brush because I hit alt or option. But anyways, those things will be covered in that specific video. But I hope that really kind of gave you a good idea. Most of these buttons and tools here have a right click option. And in terms of usage, the layers and levels and all this stuff here is going to be on every single tab for easy access and they will be identical. So if I click on L here for a second, whether I go to another tab, it's going to be the same because it's it's almost like a, a permanent window review. But this is also covered in the uh, helper layers video. Aside from that, we've covered in this video how to use these tools, how to edit the blend modes. And also that second menu where we're able to change a button name, which is the name of the button in the PAL, the group name, which is the actual folder. As you see here, this is called helper layers. That's the actual group name. And then the layer itself, once it generates the blank layer itself. And aside from that, that's it. I hope you learned a lot. If you're looking to learn more, please check out the manual or visit infinite-tools where you have a ton of other options to learn from for infinite retouch.